Hey, this is Christy um, from Mind Rewire and Christy Renee Healing Ministries. Um, I haven't been on for quite a while and um, I'm just starting to feel able <laughs> or even the inclination to get back on here again. Um, so I apologize for all of you who've been asking where I went and what happened. Um, this is my story. This is what happened. So on December 2nd of last year of 2023, I had um, what would typically be called a near-death experience, and I actually think that's wrong terminology at this point. <laughs> I have a different way of looking at it, I guess, um, like a lot of things. What happened was both of my lungs collapsed, so asthmatic for my whole life, something happened, um, Doctors are saying allergies. This is a whole nother part of the story. I'm not going to get into today, but um, allergies and then the pollutants in the air, kind of everything was a combination of all the all the right stuff to cause a huge issue at exactly the same time is how they look at it. Um, so both of my lungs collapsed and um, on the hospital paperwork, it says total um, respiratory failure, and then I went into a cardiac arrest. So um, totally not breathing, heart totally stopped beating, and then of course everything else starts failing, right? Because there's no oxygen and there's no blood flow. So the timeline that I understand was that was about five minutes. Um, I did not see any of this coming, and I keep saying that over and over. Um, not in the way where you'd be like, oh, like I'm getting worse and this is I, I, you know, we need to do something else. It didn't happen that way. It was so fast. I can't even explain how fast it came on um, to the time I had no idea what was going on to the time I hit the floor. Um, so my husband was home, thank goodness. And um, I do remember walking into our bedroom at one point and shaking his feet. He was in bed about five o'clock in the morning, maybe a little earlier, and saying, I think I'm in trouble. Um, and he said, I told him I needed medicine. He said it was pretty obvious I needed help. Um, so he got up, got me medicine, went and grabbed his phone and called 911. So he he had already figured out that I was in trouble um, beyond what I could handle or he could handle. Um, so I don't remember. I remember shaking his feet, but after that, I don't remember anything. Apparently, I wandered back into the living room and was on my nebulizer um, trying to use it. And that's when the uh, ambulance lady showed up. So a bunch of paramedics, there were, I think I want to say five women, four women, five women, um, came to the house. I've spoken to all of them. I got to hug all of them and tell all of them thank you. And tell them about my transformational event, right? I don't call it an NVE. I call it a transformational event. Um, and I'll explain that more in another video, but I got to thank all of them. And the one that walked into the house first said, I was facing the front door when she walked in. My eyes were open. I was standing up. I had my nebulizer. And she goes, I looked into your eyes and she goes, I knew we were in trouble. So turned around, went back out to get whatever she was going to get. And in the period of time, she was going out to get whatever and they were, whatever they were doing, I I went out. My heart quit, um, fully stopped breathing. Apparently that was about a five minute span between all of that happening, my husband yelling out the door, hey, she's out, she's not breathing. Them running back in, like there was this whole thing going on. Um, they got, the uh, fire truck over here, so a bunch of guys. And then you know, like realize our little tiny town is all, probably not all, but most of them are volunteers. So these guys are all very highly trained volunteers that know, um, you know, what they're doing. And this was all, to me, it's like perfectly timed. It was most amazing synchronicity. Talk about synchronicities. Most amazing synchronicity. Um, so all the fire truck guys came. I'm out at this point. I don't know what's going on. And I'll tell you what I saw in a minute. So between the time they they put on me a thing called a um, Lucas machine. If you don't know what that is, you can YouTube it, find a video. 
um, pretty horrifying by my husband's standards. Very painful in the aftermath. That's what I'm still healing up from is the beating of this thing. So it's an electric um, device that actually does compressions for them because there's no way they could do enough compressions fast enough for what I needed because my heart was fully stopped. So I did not know that the electric paddles, the shock, that's only for if you're having a heart attack. So it resets the rhythm of your heartbeat when they shock you. That wouldn't have done anything for me because I did not have a rhythm. Um, so they use this Lucas machine thing, which cracks me up, but so many people have no idea what this is. I'd never heard of it before. Nobody I talk to about it, unless they're a fireman or a paramedic, have any idea what I'm even talking about. Um, but they strap that on you and it has a suction cup that goes right over the center of your chest, right over your heart, and it beats anywhere from 100 to 120 times per minute. So that's what they used basically to um, get my heart beating again. And I understood that it also helps circulate the blood, just like your heart beating. Every time it beats, it pushes blood, right? So that was going on. So kind of cool, right? Kind of amazing, actually. Um, if they had come a minute later, if they hadn't had one of those because they're quite expensive, they got our little fire office got um, theirs on a grant, which I'm like totally amazed and excited for them about. They were excited to tell me about it when I walked over there. So, um, but I mean, then after that, right, I'm on the way to the hospital. So they threw me in the ambulance, got me, got me going on the way to the hospital. And apparently if from here to the, the hospital, um, probably speeding most of the way, but there's a canyon you have to get through. So you have to slow down. Um, because it's just crazy curves. Um, so I don't know exactly how long it took, but the hospital records say I was dead for 10 minutes. And the um, fire captain um, had said, yeah, it was probably quite a bit longer than that. So what I understood was um, the time they got me into the ambulance, I was already out. They were already trying to resuscitate me. And probably between the 20 to 30 minutes it takes to get to the hospital, more than half of that I was still out. They told me, the um, paramedic ladies told me that they'd never seen anybody fight to come back as hard as I was fighting. Um, from wiggling my toes as like hard as I could, I was trying to get their attention. Um, my stomach going up and down and they were still trying to get a heartbeat. Um, to even after they finally got a heartbeat and I had all the tubes and stuff down my throat and in my lungs, um, I was trying to talk to them. And she was like, it was just like crazy trying, you were trying to talk around the tubes and talk through all this stuff. Um, and she goes, you could tell that you were trying to let us know that you were okay, but you weren't. <laughs> so they, can, they, they uh, persisted in what they were doing. So, um, quite amazing, quite amazing. What did I see? This is the question that people keep asking me, which is why I'm doing this video. So I can just, um, tell you, I can just put a video out and say, here, go watch this video. Um, I've had people ask me everything, you know, what did you see? What did you notice? What did you hear? You know, somebody the other day asked me, did you hear the, the voice of God? And I was like, no, actually I did not hear what I would or what she was calling the voice of God. Let's put it that way. I did not hear Yahweh. I did not hear the voice of God in that kind of a manner. Um, but I didn't go looking for him either. And I told her that, that she was like, wait, what? Um, what I saw was the first thing I remember seeing was it must have been right after I went out. I was looking out the front door, so looking to the south. And for some reason, the directions are important. I haven't quite figured out why, but the directions are important. I was looking to the south and saw this huge ball of um, black colored energy coming at me. Black not meaning evil, black not meaning like darkness and evil or, right? It was just dark colored and it was moving. It was swirling. It was, it was like it was alive. Um, but I saw that coming at me from the south. And I was just like, well, I'm just watching it. And not from my body, 
um, because I could see it coming from the south. I could see the outside of our house and I was very aware of the inside of our house. I saw it go around our house um, to what I believe is the west, come around to the back of our house from the north, and then it came straight through the wall and just knocked me over. And I remember watching that and going, holy crap. When I became aware enough um, to be back in a consciousness state, I was not awake, I was not, I don't know what I was in the physical form, but in my consciousness, I was asking, what the heck was that? And apparently, sorry for the faces, apparently at some point I um, called back in all of my karma for lifetimes, um, is what I was told, is what I was given the, the um, feeling of. And in doing that, that's what showed up. What I understood, what I understand is, um, you know, lifetimes of thought patterns and lifetimes of feelings to those thought patterns where, you know, conscious, subconscious, whatever, if it's what we call negative, right? So anger, sadness, you know, go through the list of all the negative stuff. Whatever that is, if you're sending that out somewhere, it lands wherever you sent it. It can sit there and fester for a long time, apparently. And then like the idea of karma comes back to you. And apparently I have been tired for a while of fiddling with karma and trying to solve issues of this lifetime. And I just called it all back at once. And I won't tell you the things I was saying. The people who know me <laughs> and by me the closest know what I was saying because they heard it. And a few people have called me out on it. It's like, oh, that's when you were saying. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. Um, but I was highly protected in that. I was highly protected. I can't even tell you the beings and the angels, whatever you want to call them, the entities, the benevolence that was around me, that surrounded me. Um, I think is part of the reason that I survived um, as well as I have and have maintained the information and the sense of peace that I was given from that state. Um, so what I saw outside of that ball of energy swirling around, um, there was a place that I moved into um, and I'm going to call it darkness for lack of a better word because we discern dark from light. So it wasn't like it was a room full of light. It was a room that appeared dark in my conscious awareness, but not dark like void of goodness. Does that make any sense? Not dark like void of goodness. So I was watching from this place that was solid peace. It was just so calm and so lovely. Um, the beings that were standing with me, first of all, I became very aware of. There was five of them that flanked me in kind of a semicircle. And I knew that I was fine. I knew that I was going to be all right. There was no questioning it. I wasn't scared. I wasn't upset. I, um, I don't know. There was none of that. But I watched as my husband called 911. I watched as the ambulance showed up. I watched as the fire truck showed up. I watched as people gathered around. I watched as my husband made phone calls and my son sent text messages out for, um, you know, people who who are in our our inner circle, and that people that he wanted to know what was happening. And then people outside of that that were gathering. And it was just forming this huge matrix, huge web of um, people praying and doing their energy work and um, sending light and love, like whatever their thing was, right? I actually have a lady on my team um, who does amazing work with something called brain integration. My son texted her because she's worked on him quite a bit. She's worked on me too, honestly. Um, and she started doing brain integration on me. While I was still in the ICU, she's like doing whatever, whatever she was getting from her understanding and from her intuition and her team. And the only thing I know was from my husband who called 
the um, paramedics, I mean, he saved my life. To them showing up when they did, they saved my life. To the firemen who showed up and put me in that lupus machine, they saved my life. To the lady who actually finally got a tube down my throat, they said, or down into my lungs, she said my lungs were so tight, like so squeezed shut, she couldn't even get a line in it, into my lungs. So to the point that that actually happened. Um, to all the people who started circling around praying and doing the energy work and um, my friend Deb who was doing all of the stuff she was doing and I, it was just amazing, right? Sherry who, um, I mean, I could name endless amounts of people that I know were working um, benevolently, benevolently in my benefit and people who were just saying their prayers and I say just not lightly. You guys all saved my life. Every one of you who has thought of me since then, wondering how I'm doing or, you know, just thinking of me, you guys all saved my life. Everybody who put in a good thought and a good deed or, um, you know, just by sending love, you guys saved my life. And so I don't take that lightly. I'm in awe, I'm eternally grateful. And I'm super happy to be here. I can honestly say that. Um, what happened in the aftermath of it? So I was um, in the emergency room and into ICU pretty lickety split from my husband's account. They were wiring me up and putting electrodes on my head and had me hooked to heart monitors and like everything else. Um, put me into a coma. I was in a coma for three days and then woke up. Um, apparently my husband had given me paper and I was scribbling, writing on this paper, trying to write messages to him, which is super interesting. Um, and then they sent me down to the cardiac ward and I was in there for three days, at which point a doctor came in and looked at me and he goes, I'm going to be honest with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You can go home. And I was just like, are you sure? He goes, your only limitation is going to be your pain tolerance. So basically what I understand happened with the Lucas machine is they, they crush your rib cage, right? I mean, when they're beating you 120 times a minute, trying to get your heart beating, had no broken bones, so it's a lot of bruising and just um, cartilage damage. Um, ribs out of place, which I just recently found out in my back. A chiropractor pushed a bunch of those back in for me and changed everything almost instantly on the pain level. So that was kind of cool. That was very cool. It was beyond kind of cool. That was very cool. Um, but no brain damage. For somebody who had been out that long, no brain damage, no heart tissue damage. Um, all of my organs were failing. So by the time um, they started getting stuff going again on my charts, it says renal kidney failure, um, renal liver failure. Um, when I woke up, I was coughing horribly and it was so painful to cough. I was like, they had me hugging pillows and bracing and you know, trying to hold my rib cage together and um, coughing up these horrible, like egg white sized blobs of viscous stuff. And one of the um, nurses actually told me, she goes, you know what that is? And I was like, I, like, it's nasty, but it was clear. So there's no infection, right? Um, but she goes, no, so when a person dies, their lungs fill up, everything turns off, right? Everything kind of goes haywire. And she goes, if you were sitting with somebody dying and you heard the rattle, and they call it a death rattle, I'm like, I have heard that before, actually. Um, she goes, that's what you're coughing up, is what they would be rattling around in their lungs as they're dying. She goes, and you get to cough it up. <laughs> like, I have to think about that one for a minute. So that was... That was pretty mind boggling. So I am totally fine outside, totally fine outside of my um, pain that I get from 
and especially the sex suction cup. I can feel the circle where it was stuck in the middle of my chest. I can still feel that circle. Um, and the when I cough, it just feels like everything's going to cave in. And I, I haven't sneezed. I keep doing everything, pushing every point I can to keep myself from sneezing. Um, so that's pretty much the story of that. I uh, did not see a tunnel. I did not see the light. I just saw the beauty of all the people gathering um, and putting so many lovely thoughts and prayers and intentions on my behalf into the universe. Um, I didn't hear a voice of God. I wasn't given a choice. Do you want to go back or not? There was no choice, um, which kind of tells me from the standpoint of seeing the rolling ball of karma coming at me that if I caused that, the intention wasn't death, that it was just, uh, you know, we're just clearing things up is what you asked for. <laughs> no. Tell me what you think in the comments below. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I said before, too, you know, they call these NDEs, near-death experiences, if you have died and they have to bring you back, that's not near death. You died. So I think we're calling this wrongly and it's giving a, a false impression subconsciously, possibly in the way we talk about it to ourselves. Um, force is how you understand it. I did not have a near death experience. I did die and I was resurrected. Think about that one for a second, because it's so interesting when you look at it versus near death. There was no near death. I was dead. If everybody had put their hands up and walked away, I'd, I'd been gone. It was done. There was no heartbeat. There was no breath. There was no moving blood. I was good. I was done. Um, so in my head, that's more of a, uh, you know, you died and you got you got the opportunity, you got the resurrection, which I think is how it was supposed to be um, in allowing my karma clearing to happen. Uh, I feel like a child now. I can't even explain it to you. I walk around giggling and laughing at things. I'm either giggling and laughing or crying. The tears just pour. And I, I don't know why. Sometimes I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden I'll start crying. Hearing people's voices a lot of times will make me cry. Just the sound of their voice. It's like music in my ears. It's so amazing. Um, but basically, that's what happened. Let me know what you think. Drop your um, questions or comments below. Do you have any ideas or thoughts on any of this? Um, I'm still putting it together. I'm still writing stuff down. I'm still remembering stuff. I'm still understanding stuff. I'm just uh, in awe, basically, of the amount of peace that you can actually carry in this physical body and how you can move it and send it and give it um, on levels that I never understood before. I don't know how to explain it. I don't know how to explain the darkness because in the darkness where I was sitting, I could see everything. So it wasn't dark like the lights are out dark or like you have your eyes closed dark. It was just, I mean, I just don't know how to explain it. It wasn't a room full of light, so I'm calling it darkness. But it was amazing. And I could see everything. I could go anywhere. Yeah. Anyway, bless you for listening to me ramble on. Um, I'm going to keep posting videos and tell you what I think of our doctor and pharmaceutical industry, because I've had some experiences now I wouldn't have had, had it not been for this, and just some of the weird things that go on um, within that. I learned a lot about doctors and their intentions, and I had some amazing doctors, and I've had some now that I'm just looking sideways at going, what are you doing? It's like, why? Why? Are you asking me to do this stuff? Um, so I'm going to do a video on that, and I'm going to talk more about my transformational experience um, versus my NDE 
or perhaps my uh, uh, my death and resurrection versus an NDE. Bless you. Thank you for being here. We'll talk soon.